Welcome fabricators. Yesterday we had our fabric monthly update and my good friend Bradley Schatt from the Microsoft Fabric Cat product group showed us the new snippets in notebooks. Amazing stuff. And that's what we're going to explore today on Tales from the Field. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Okay, Fabricators, code snippets are going to allow us to look at new code, new scripts, find some new functionality that we may not have looked at before. And before the end of this, I'm going to show you a snippet that I used in a recent video that had I known was there would have saved me a lot of time and research. But first, if this is your first time finding your way over to Tales from the Field, give us a like and give us a subscribe. We drop content every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. On Monday, we drop our MS Tech Bits. On Tuesday, we drop our Azure Data Community Roundtable, which features content from the creators in the Azure Data Community for the Azure Data Community. And on Wednesday, we have another MS Tech Bits. This video specifically was inspired by our interaction with our good friends over on the Fabric Cat team as part of the Microsoft Fabric product group. So let's not waste any more time. Let's talk about snippets. This is a really, really cool thing. And you know what? Let's just go straight over to the demo. I'm in my Microsoft Fabric workspace and I need to get to this in a notebook. So in a notebook, you click edit and then you'll see that we have browse code snippets. Uh, we're going to go over and we're going to click on browse code snippets. That's going to open up our window where we can see all the different snippets we've got. Now, notice that we've got Scala, R, Spark SQL, and PySpark. PySpark is by far the most developed library that we have right now, but I would expect that to continue to grow as well as the others as well. Now, looking at this right away, the very first thing that I'm looking at um, under best practice is performant data copy. That seems very interesting. It just adds the fast CP uh, to a copy thing. Uh, we've also got run multiple notebooks in parallel. Uh, and then we've also got run multiple notebooks in parallel with sequential and in parallel. Now, I recently covered in our Azure Data Community Roundtable a blog by uh, a wonderful MVP of ours, Edwin de Kirk. Uh, and there's going to be a link in the description to his blog where he walks through how to be able to do this, how to be able to put together a Daga data acrylic graph to execute notebooks and have dependencies. Um, and he actually puts in what all those variables are. Amazing stuff. Uh, under visualization, you can see we've got a lot of different examples, line charts and matplotlib, stack plots, 3D bar charts, uh, Seaborn, Phil, so many different things. Then under MS Spark Utils, we can come down here and we can start looking at unmount a session level, access a data uh, via mount point, uh, list mount points, um, get notebook resource pass. There's so many wonderful things and so many shortcut codes that you would have to search through our documentation to be able to find. Get the path of a mount point, list a file system via APIs. Um, and then under Lakehouse Interaction, we've got some things that are very common that you've seen before, right? Data to a Delta table. Um, that's going to be very familiar. Uh, read data from a Delta table, very familiar again as well. Uh, and then we've got conditional logic. Now, this is really interesting because as we add these snippets, again, this gives us an outline for the code that we can put and we can use. So if you're looking at how do I evaluate conditional logic, bam, you've got it. Go back over to browse snippets. Um, and now we're going to go over to uh, the notebook utilities. Now, this one only had one, a reference run notebook, but this would save me a lot of time the other day. I'm going to insert this into my notebook and let's go ahead and execute this. Now, I did a previous video on this uh, calling notebooks from notebooks. Uh, and so I'm going to call my called notebook and I'm going to go ahead and execute this. One thing I didn't go into on that video, I'm going to go into right now. And that's when you run a notebook that's calling another notebook, you actually get the capability to go into the called notebook. Now, this is going to load the parameters that we have in place. It's going to show you the code that's executed. But if I pass it parameters and code, it will show those parameters and what was executed as well. A little bit more fabric magic. Absolutely amazing stuff. So what have we learned? Well, what we've learned is that we have the capability to have this library on demand. It's already sitting inside your notebooks. Go use it. This is a wonderful reference. You don't even have to leave the Microsoft Fabric interface to be able to go look up these code snippets to be able to help you shortcut your coding process. You know what we want to do? We want to hear from you. Sound off. Was this helpful? Did you learn something new? 
Uh, is there something you'd like to see? Any questions you have about this? Thank you so much for joining us from Tales from the Field. And as always, be good to one another out there. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day.